Hey guys, welcome back. This episode, I'm going to be showing you how to do a throttle cable modification to tidy things up a little bit in the engine bay. So if you're anything like me, you don't think that a Cleveland is really the greatest looking engine um, to begin with from factory, um, just with all the extra lines and having the spark plug leads and that at the front rather than the dizzy at the back. Um, yeah, so I'll try and do it again to sort of minimise things because it's a bit of a busy, um, busy engine I think, um, just looking at the water pump and stuff like that, all the different shapes and that rather than a nice 350 Chev where they're just... I think they're a nicer looking engine. But anyway, still love a Cleveland. Um, so yeah, one of the mods I've done is basically taking a standard V8 or even six cylinder um, throttle cable to get rid of it coming around the front of the engine bay. So if I turn the light on. So basically what I'm saying is, yeah, the V8 one comes from there, comes around the front to your carby, like that, um, which, yeah, I don't really like because it just, it's just more crap. Coming out the front, so a lot of people grab a XC, is the cable generally, um, that goes from the firewall around to the back of the carby, but what I've done is I've taken a standard eight cylinder um, throttle cable and modified it so it sort of sits nicely um, and comes up onto our throttle little bracket there um, so basically um, this episode is yeah just taking you through different measurements and stuff like that to make it easier for you guys and how to put a new end on um, on the cable so you can adapt it to your carby so you won't need too many tools for this one um, sort of pretty basic stuff from home so you have a drill um, angle grinder uh, some side cutters now I tend to use a busted old pair of side cutters um, to cut my cable um, just for the simple fact that, yeah, if you're using your good pair, you're going to blunt them. So just find some old fence pliers or whatever you got to um, cut them rather than your nice electrical side cutters. Um, then the other thing you need to do is, the only money you really got to spend on it, is go and buy some throttle linkage. Um, so you can get these as like a, I think, red line do them. Um, it says bloody, yeah, red line, I don't know if RPC or whatever they're called doing, but just the, um, yeah, the brass sort of... Um, Throttle linkages you get in the kit. Um, I'll keep a bit of odds and ends here. But yeah, they come with the rod, just like a carby linkage with the ends. But I'll get rid of the rod and just use the end. Um, so I've done a few on other cars where I've adapted this to the cable and it never come off. So I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, and yeah, so we'll get into it. You basically cut the end of your cable off first. Um, and then pull the cable completely out. Don't worry about the old bit of um, that you take off where the ball goes on the carby. We're getting rid of that, as I said. Um, and then, yeah, pull the cable right out, and then you can cut your sheath. So basically, I'm you guys at home. Um, I've measured um, a few different things to help me just go ahead and cut it. So obviously, when I've done it in my car, um, started from scratch. So um, basically, yeah, had to fit it to the firewall and stuff around back and forward to try and set it up right. Um, but yeah, you've got a couple of different measurements there. Um, well, sorry, a couple of different adjustments there on the carby um, to adjust it. Um, so basically, from the end stop there to where the sheath is going to get cut is 510 mil, and then. The next step will be to get that onto your sheath. And so when you're doing that, you want to grab the steel end that came off the sheath, put it in your vise, and use your 6.5mm drill bit, and you're going to drill the old bit of sheath out. Once you've done that, you can then slide it on to your cut sheath, and yeah, basically crimp it. So what I ended up doing is I ended up using just um, battery lead crimpers for the lug nuts and stuff like that. Um, you can use other stuff if you want. It's a fairly snug fit, just with that 6.5mm drill bit. 
where it's it's firm when it goes on and you shouldn't really need to crimp it because once it's locked off on one end um, in the cable bracket and then on the firewall that sheet's not really going to move anywhere so you, you're safe either way but yeah i'll just use some um, battery crimpers but also keep in mind that your cable still needs to slide in and out of that sheath so don't go too firm otherwise yeah you've kind of buggered it so the other measurement from the end of the sheath oh sorry not sheath but the steel part to where the cable is going to be is going to be 135 mil from there to there then once you've done that you can go ahead that's obviously with that all the way in there so cable pull tight 135 mil from end of that to that cut it and then from there you are ready to solder on your coupling so what we're going to do here is grab your end chuck it in your vise and then get a little blower torch that's all i use you can use an oxy if you really want go be soldering wire and what we're going to do is just heat it keep heating it until that solder burns in prep your cable um, to prevent best case scenario of it not pulling out of that end. Now basically we're going to make this look like a squid jig basically. So what you want to do is you want to try and fray the end of it. Oh, there you go. Try and fray the end of it a little bit and then grab your pliers and fold a little bit over with your fingers too. Don't have to be every wire, just a couple of them basically what they're going to do is just act as a, as a backwards so once it goes into the threaded part of that um, the coupling end the threads are, oh, sorry, the wires are going to be facing back and they're sort of going to help pull against the thread um, yeah so it won't go backwards so i just fold a couple over little fingers try and make them short if you can need to be big massive ones and then just grab your pliers and just crimp it so they're all nice and tight right and then what you can do is it sort of tries to untwist it so you just grab the wires and sort of just twist it back around how they go um, and that sort of tidies it up a little bit more and obviously any bits that are going to be a little bit longer again just do a trim And the other thing I'll sort of do is just to make it look a little bit nicer, you can. Oh, this is a bit of light. There we go. Yeah, just heat it up a little bit more again and um, put some more solder into it and I'll just finish that end off a bit nicer, really. Oh, yeah, so there it is. Yeah, Put the cable on it. You can then buff this up if you want because you get a bit of um, stain and that on it. So on my one, that's already done. I used just a gasket buff and just clean that up. That's sort of, yeah, that's your finished product. And then obviously give it a, a test, give it a big pull um, and see if that's going to come off. But done it well enough, shouldn't really have an issue. 
So then from there, you can fit it, basically. So yeah, hope that helps you guys out. Um, tidy things up a little bit. Just, yeah, I'm gonna say a little bit shorter than the six cylinder one, which is what I'd rather. Um, and then, yeah, with the other adjustments, what you got? So it doesn't have to be critical with those measurements because you've got an adjustment here on your lock and also adjustment on your slide if you're using this same sort of setup. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that the quick fuel carbies are the same as a holly. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps you out guys. Um, remember, have a go, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Put the cable on the car. Can you put the throttle cable on the car. Yeah. Go put it on the car. Go put it on the car. That's it. Go put it on the. No, on the car.